All right. Let's get going. All right, so. <coughs> bad news is midterm grades sucked. I don't um, know they did. Good news is my classes are always backloaded. So it's still actually potential for you to get an A if you just start trying from this point because all the major assignments are still to come. Uh, although I don't allow any backtracking, so you, you got what you got right now, but there's still time. Well, so, yesterday uh, in another class, someone asked me, oh, how many quizzes have been up? And I said four, and I told them, and you got zero because they're all down. Yeah, yeah, and I won't put them back up. Um, I'll answer that question about the forum. Yeah, um, I was just curious. I was just going to put two answers, but I didn't really know. He wanted a specific one. Maybe it's worded differently. I will uh, I'll actually look at that, not during class, but when before I'm done, I'll answer it. Um, it's probably a typo. Okay. Um, I just read through it a couple times, I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah, probably a typo. I'm trying to make it easier than the example I actually put on the Excel sheet. And the thing of it is, just a little helpful hint, is it if you just put the numbers in the Excel sheet, it does the calculations for you. Yeah. All you got to do is figure out what numbers to put in. Yeah. I've set it up with the formulas in there. So if you put $500, it'll do all the calculations for you. So, and that's something that, I mean, honestly, you guys can keep. I actually use a version of that when I'm calculating whether or not to take a gig. I'll just, as I'm talking on the phone with somebody, I'll just type the numbers in, and then you can figure out if it's worth it or not. And I kind of got my Mendoza line like, we can't go below this. And it all boils down to the individual pay. I can't pay my guys any less than this. And if it, if it all, everything comes in and figures up to be less than that, you just got to turn it down. All right, so um, we're going to go over several things we went over last week because we got to catch up on quizzes. We're a little bit behind. Um, and like I said in the announcement, I'm making... Yeah, there, there's, there's two of them. There's two this week. But you, I'm going to give you till Monday to get them done. So, oh, okay, cool. So they okay, won't cause, be... Because uh, uh, you know, when I was reading that email, and it said something about, that, and something about a quiz over the weekend, I thought, what is that, three? No, no, two, know, Okay, two. it's just two. Two, but I'm giving you Monday. till Monday to okay. get it done. All right. Um, because we're behind, but the, the group, the regional music scene, I'm going to make that an individual assignment. It's going to be seven minutes, and just you can upload it on YouTube. Um, it can be a PowerPoint presentation. It can be a screenshot of you talking, but it does have to be visual media use. Otherwise, it's not really a presentation. Um, the lab should be able to help you if you don't have the proper equipment for that. Um, but And then, so that assignment will in essence be the same type of assignment as the individual movie project at the end of the semester. And those are the two big ones remaining. And then the final, I don't give a final, it's just a reflection paper. My final is, tell me what you learned. And as long as you go deep and actually give me something good, you'll get 100 on the final. So after we're done with the 10 quizzes, which will actually be here in about four weeks, we're actually done with all the testing. There won't be any more testing. Um, the big thing in midterm was the lack of forum. Like that, that just dings everybody because it's, it's easy. All you got to do is I have a question do it. About that. Yeah. I, when I go to reply to it, I, I don't see an initial reply button to just a forum. I mm -hmm. see a reply button to whoever posts. There is so a create, create thread in the upper left right hand corner. Create yeah. thread. Yes. Yeah, for your for your yeah. um for your post, create a thread. Mm -hmm. For your replies to to your fellow students, just hit reply to theirs. Well, uh, that's what I've been doing since the beginning of. Well, I see everything. No yeah, matter how yeah, it well, comes, I, I see I, it. I, I didn't get all of it. I just wanted to make sure that that was still showing up when, yeah. when I did do the form. Yeah, yeah, everything shows up. Okay. Um, it, and if it's in the wrong spot, I mean, I can figure that out. Obviously, if it's 250, 300 words, then it's, you meant that to be your post. But just so, you can, so you're doing it right, it, when you're doing your post, create a thread. Then you, where is that? Where's the button? Upper left-hand corner. Left. And, yeah. Just above. Okay, I, I, I sat there for an hour looking for a button to create for a button to do a reply back to it normally. I could not find it. Yeah, there's some tutorials online they have for, for Blackboard. The unfortunate thing is because I'm distance, other than explaining it via text and an email, mm -hmm. I can't really explain well, it either. I, I so I'm even going to try to do it over email if I was waiting for the day. 
today. <laughs> I've tried to explain it via email to people before, and it just gets it, it gets messy. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 really hard. Okay, so we're gonna review. Um, what is a booking agent in the music industry? They get your gigs and they get the things that you're gonna be. That's what they do, but what are they? What are they the, the equivalent to? We talked about it last time. Anyone remember? Yeah, I said what it was. What is employment it? agency. Employment yeah. Agency. Correct. It's an employment agency Please. for an act. Um, and they are paid because of their relationships, their network. That's that's what a booking agent has. Nothing that a a lot of the music industry is technical. If you're a producer or especially like an engineer, you're paid because of your technical ability. If you're an artist or a songwriter, you're paid because of your talent. If you're a manager, you're paid because of your strategic thinking and your relationships. If you're a booking agent, nothing you technically do is very hard in, in the intellectual sense. But what it is, they're kind of the car salesman of the music business. And so they're paid strictly for the relationships. And they're typically paid 15% gross of every gig. And remember we talked about, very important to remember, that their percentage comes out before it comes into the entity of the band. That manager, business manager, everything else, it comes out before. It's not included. So when you're doing your calculations, you've got to remember that. Um, who is the spokesperson for an artist? Publicist. Publicity agent. Publicist. Oh, yeah. Publicist. Yeah. Publicist. Um, and we talked about how the music industry is shrinking, sort of becoming more downscoped. So labels are less important, but you still need all the pieces of the value chain. You still need booking, you still need publicity, you still need marketing, you still need accounting. So, so the most important person in the life of an artist is the, anyone? Bueller? Sloan Peterson? It's an old 80s <laughs> reference, but. Bueller. Um, uh, is it the personal manager? personal manager is the most important. That is the absolute most important person. Um, the standard commission for a personal manager is between 15 and 20 percent um, and it's 50 percent of the gross revenue of the band in totality. So um, money generated, um, what, what, what would you call money generated by all the company's operations before you take out expenses? No. And before you take out gross. 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 Yes, after. Keep that in mind because we're going to be talking about a lot about gross and net. Um, typically we're talking about publicists and we're doing a quick review. Um, publicists are typically paid in a flat fee. They're not paid unlike personal managers, business managers, and booking agents. They are paid a flat fee. Um, a business manager is paid 5% typically. And they, unlike a personal manager where they handle strategy and the day-to-day -day operations, they strictly handle the numbers. Writing checks, cutting checks, fixed overhead, accounting, that sort of thing. Who did you say that is? That's the business manager. All right, and then the last little piece of the puzzle, typically, other than we, we didn't really talk about marketing companies and accounting because that's a little more in-depth than we want to go in this class, um, is the radio promoter. And they basically call radio stations, and once again, they're kind of similar to booking agents. They're paid for the relationships. They know all the program directors of the radio stations. They call them and say, hey, will you give a listen to X artist? And they're also pay, paid a flat fee. And that's the thing that, remember we talked about country radio, it's typically $250,000. For pop radio, it's over a million. Americana, it's 5000 So, and then the Christian radio, it's 5000 So it's, it depends on the market you're trying to get into. Um, Actually, in the college music charts, it, it can be as cheap as a thousand bucks to to get a radio promoter, a good one, to promote you. Back to back to the publicist, them being paid flat fee. Is that like flat fee across the board, or it just being job to job? You know, as far as the uh, size of it. Depends on the publicist. You can hire a publicist to do something as simple as write one press release or write a bio for you, or you can hire them month to month. Um, and they can work tour publicity, so it depends on the publicist and on the work that needs to be done. So, I mean, and they run anywhere from three hundred to a thousand dollars for a bio, or they can run twelve hundred to three thousand dollars a month. 
Um, okay. The lower level you are. Would there be like a package to go along with the bio? Or, you know. Depends. I mean, anything you add to that collateral, yeah. they're going to add. I mean, if they want to put in a tear sheet or a one sheet for a record, they're going to add, you know, it's going to add cost to that. Um, so it depends on the publicist. Uh, it really does. And, you know, the smaller you are, the less you're going to need. A good bio, it's worth hiring them for a good bio. Um, be ready to do some calculations on this quiz for sure. Radio promoters, they are flat. Yep, they are flat. So, all right. Okay. And, yes. Um, I haven't really talked a whole lot about publishers. We're getting into that this week, actually. Okay. Okay, so I'll just wait. Okay. Let's talk about this. What is a copyright? What does it literally mean? It means that you bear the rights to it. It belongs to you. It's yours. It's basically like a patent. Almost. It is like a patent. It literally means, don't make it too complicated, it literally means the right to copy. You have that right. I mean, the word defines it. Oh, I was looking up something on, uh, okay. But I couldn't find what I wanted. There is a fee that is kind of like a, an overall coverage if you want to do covers of several songs. Oh, a lot of times, like, um, take... And, and you don't, want, you know, go directly to the... Yeah, you're going to pay a flat fee to their PRO, whether you're a, a, a club or a venue. First of all, if you're an artist that is showing up to a club uh -huh. and you're playing covers, yeah. you don't pay right. the PRO. Okay, but uh, what about in the recording, though, if you were... That's different. That's what I was... Um, it depends on if it's short run or if it's considered a short run. If it's considered a demo, mm -hmm. um, it's one fee. If it's considered a short run, which is under 10000 it's another small fee. And if it's con considered mass production, it's another fee. Okay. So it all depends on how many you're going to press. Yeah. And how many you think you're going to sell. Yeah. But venues like the Ford Center, they pay... For example, they'll pay ASCAP or CSEC or BMI a, a flat fee every year. Mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. a certain amount, and they calculate it by, you know, some sort of algorithm that a number of times they're going to play a song and, and all then, that sort of stuff. And then the, these different bands come in and play whatever song they want by a different artist, but the venue is the one who. Yeah, and and here's the thing: it doesn't have to be a song from another artist. If Tom Tom Petty who's coming. Yeah. The Ford Center. If he comes and he shows up and he plays American Girl, which is his song, yeah. that venue will still have to pay the PRO for the payment of that song. So Tom Petty will get paid to play his own song. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't but have I to mean, be somebody else's. I mean, you know, like if someone, someone else comes in and plays somebody else's song, that fee or whatever, you know, whatever that is, that the venue takes care of. The artist doesn't have to like he doesn't, do the permission no. thing, right? No, you can cover okay. anybody's okay. song. Okay. You you have every right to do it. The only the only rights that exist with a copyright like that is mm -hmm. basically the first right to record it. You can maintain as the writer the first right to record it. it it's mm -hmm. mine, I get to record it first. Once you put it out, like if I record a song and I put it out into the world, anybody can record it. Five million other people can record that song, and I can't do anything about it. And they can put it out. So that's the only the only right that exists is the first right to record it. So what, what is the beef about you know some artists saying uh, that they don't want someone else you know covering their music, but then they go ahead and cover somebody else's? Well, they can say that all they want, but there's no legal ramifications for it. I mean, you have what, what song is that that uh, under pressure? Then, now that's different because that that wasn't a cover. Vanilla Ice claimed he wrote. That's it. true. He so, added that extra beat in there. That's what. So now that's the difference. Like anybody, if I record a song that I write, anybody can go and record that. But they, they got to pay me for it. Yeah. They got to they got to pay me. I can't stop them from doing. It. I can't say this artist sucks. I don't want them to record my song. It's, that's not up to me. They can record it, but then they have to pay me for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when we talked about. There's two sides of that. There's the nine cents 
on the writer side and the nine cents on the publishing side, mm -hmm. and they have to pay for both of those. So now one's a mechanical royalty, which the um, which is the, for the actual performance of it, and the other's the publishing side. So they're not going to go to the same place, but they both have to be paid. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Okay. All right. Let's see where I'm at. We got off track a little bit. <laughs> um, okay. If, say, you're writing a song. Aaron and I writing a song together, and he writes the lyrics, and I write the music. Me writing the music, do I own more of the copyright than him? As a custom? No. It's equal, isn't it? No. It is, um, it, is typically, a, a lyricist will get about 25%. a little bit less. Um, than the writers of the music, if, if oh. that's all they wrote. Oh. Now, if they wrote, if you and I wrote together and we wrote the music and the lyrics together, then that's different. Yeah. But if you just came in with the lyrics and like you came and handed me a poem and I turned it into music, I'm gonna own more of that copyright yeah. than you. Okay. Um, but that's changing, okay? So, um, so I would say that custom what if you sing the lyrics? Well, then that would be writing melody. Mm -hmm. So that would be different. Right. Now, I'll say this, and, and, and I, if I were you, I'd write this down. Since that custom is changing, I would go ahead and say that it, it, is, uh, it is customary for, the, for, the, for it to be shared equally, because that's changing. Back in the 20s, when you really like with Rogers and Hammerstein, Hammerstein and like when they'd write Broadway, yeah. it was really typical for one person to write lyrics and another person to write all the music and melody. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's not the case anymore. Yeah. It's typical for people to be really collaborative on both. So I would say it is customary now, if you're talking now, uh, to share equally. But it was not historically. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. You guys need to do this. You need to uh, look up this. I'm not going to go through it, but you need to look up the uh, Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act of 1998. It's in the book, or you can Google it. What? Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act of 1998. Isn't that what, like, lengthened it to 70 years or something like that? Yeah, it extended the copyright. Yeah. Wait, it was 50. That was 99. <laughs> I don't know where I got money. Was it one at fifty before that? Well, it's now it's it's now the uh, life of the author plus. plus seventy years. But what was it before? I thought it was a life plus. 50. It's changed several times. Okay. So which which changed? It's the first one. The very first one was plus um, plus twenty eight years. Okay. Well, okay. Well, no, it was the one before seventy. Before, it, before the latest change, it was fifty. Fifty. Okay. Yeah. That's what. Oh. But it's changed several times. All right, yeah. what about like Disney? Disney, like Mickey Mouse, for instance. Okay. It's created by Walt Disney. And then Walt Disney dies, and then it's like 70 years later. Does that go into public domain, or do, do you have the... Uh, you can renew a copyright. Right, right, right. But his, the company of Disney will renew that right. copyright and, and can get an extension for okay. it. So... But it hasn't been his lifetime plus 70 years. He died back in the 70s, I believe, some point. Mm -hmm. and so it hadn't been oh. 70 years. So it, it wouldn't even be up anyway. Right, right. So who would be paid beyond the life of the author? Uh, whoever, his, whoever he deemed like he, his will, his children, his, whoever that person deems would get that copyright. Okay. Uh, once something's public domain, it's free game. Nobody has to pay anything to, you know. So when was your list like for, uh, for a public debate? You know, would that be like early, like back in the twenties or thirties? Like composers or like Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, like those guys. Like anybody can record their work. Yeah, there's no copyright. Right. Um, yeah. Copyright didn't even exist back then. Exactly. So. Um. So once something's public domain, uh, and it and it's. There's been a fight a few times over like Twinkle Little Star and stuff to get something that went into public domain to get it back out of public domain. That's very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. 
once it goes to public domain, you're pretty much. What about uh, Happy Birthday? Does someone own the rights to that? I have no idea. Um, I get a. I could look that up. There's a list because we did a big Christmas album and we had to do all public. Domain. Yes. Oh, yeah, we did. We had to do that. Yeah, we did that last year. Oh, somebody have their phone so I can keep lecturing so I can look that up. Happy birthday, copyright. Um, also in your book, uh, and remember the quizzes are open book. Don't be afraid to crack the book open. Um, While we're in our house, like take the quizzes? Yeah. I, I don't think, I'd be surprised if somebody was like, all right, I got the quiz right here. I'm going to put my book over there and not look at it. You know, even, if, even if it was an open book. Oh, well, by some of the grades, I'm not sure people did open their books. I think, I think, I think one of them, I did have to look at the answer. And that's fine. It, it's, to me, it's not a matter of if you memorize stuff. It's more a matter of if you're learning it. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, even if you're like, oh, I know something about that. i got to look it back up. But if you ever need it, that's the main thing, is if you need the information, it's somewhere in the catalog of your brain. Um, in 1995, Congress also passed the Digital Performance Right and Sound Recording Act. And that gives recording companies the exclusive right to perform the copyright work publicly by means of a digital audio transmission. And they started to think that way. There's also the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, and that started coming about in 95 because in 1993, what happened in the world in 1993 that would cause people to start worrying about the Digital Right Copyright CDs. Act? No, CDs are way before that. What happened in 1993, they would change everything and so that music could be transferred digitally. Computers. Internet. Well, computers have been around since the 50s. Mm -hmm. Internet. The internet. The World Wide Warner. Web, so Warner. to speak. Warner owns it. <laughs> well, Al Gore invented it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm talking about the song. Oh. Happy birthday. Oh, who does? Warner. Warner. Warner Brothers. Oh, okay. Well, no. Warner, it's like one of their music groups. The the <laughs> one of their music Warner, Warner Chapel. Chapel. Yeah. 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 That's who owns it. They bought the, some company owned it and then they bought the company. So they, okay. And it goes, it goes up in 2030. So that's cool to know. Yeah. They'll, they'll do that a lot because, I mean, obviously you're singing it at your you know, nephew's birthday party. No one's yeah. going to charge you for that. But All right, so you need to know the Digital Performance Right and Sound Recording Act. All right. What does PRO stand for? PRO? Mm-hmm. Performing Rights Organization, and there are three main ones. Can anyone name what they are? Performing Rights what? Organization. There are three of them. And they go by acronyms. BMI is one. BMI is one. BMI. What? EMI. That's a record label. I don't, I don't know. ASCAP. ASCAP is the second one, and then there's a third. Is that two eyes in it? CSAC. Yeah. There are others, but those are the three main ones. Is that S E? S E S A C. Okay. Um, what was the second one? ASCAP. A S C A P. Okay. ASCAP was the first. It was started by songwriters. And it was meant to keep track of the mechanical royalties for songwriters when it was played on the things were played on the radio. BMI was started by the radio stations to keep up with it. And the smallest of the three is CSAC, and it is privately owned. That's the important fact you need to know there. Who owns it? Uh, I don't know the name of the person. It's, it's a private equity company. It's not just one guy, but it's not. Basically, a privately owned company doesn't mean that one guy owns it. Mm -hmm. It means that there's been no IPO 
or right. an initial public offer, you can't buy stocks right. in it. Unless it's offered to you, right? No, you can't buy stocks uh -huh. in a period. Only publicly traded companies you can buy stocks. Uh -huh. You can take it, you can buy a share. If somebody wants out, one of the one of the owners wants out, they can sell their percentage of the company to you, but it's not a stock. Okay. It's not the same as a publicly traded okay. company. Okay. Um, remember that a copyright exists to protect a songwriter and the publisher. That's why they exist. There is a big movement, um, and we can actually get into this now, of when someone down something, downloads something illegally, there's this big uh, debate, and there's a big generational gap on the validity of intellectual property. Um, intellectual property can be anything from a song to a movie script to an app to uh, you know a game, anything that you came up with in your brain. And intellectual property is was created to basically be a patent for thoughts. But now, there's a big movement that they shouldn't be, that works of art and other things, apps and things, should be there for everyone to take free. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Are you going to patent it? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Just your personal beliefs. Uh, I mean, no, it's yours. I think... On one hand, I think that uh, works of art, like let's say, I saw Michelangelo's Last Judgment when I was watching the Papal Cup clip. Um, works of art like that, you know, really edify humanity in something that like humanity believes in. And it's like, it, you know, you look at that and you've got the idea about what's going to happen whenever, you know, Jesus comes back and he starts stretching everything. Yeah, if, if that's what you believe, or you know, even if you don't believe that, you're, you got this interpretation of it, but you don't have any visual manifestation in order to associate with that. But you look at Michelangelo, who is this like one of the greatest artist you know, in mankind's history. Um, uh, he's created this work of art that really kind of embodies it in a, in a certain way, and so a lot of people can really get something positive from that. Um, on the other hand, he did create it. You know, he should be entitled to some kind of uh, money or investment or some kind of compensation for his time and his put like putting money into that. You know, um, essentially. And I mean, let's say I make a song. Um, you know, I if I I hope that, that my song helps somebody out. It helps if they like it, they enjoy it. You know. Um, that's the that's the purpose of the music for enjoying it, um, at least in my creation of it. Uh, so, you know, if people want to pay money for me to like, have a physical copy of it or to come see me at a show, yeah, that's totally fine. You know? What but if they want a digital copy for they free? Want a digital copy? Sure. For free? Sure. Okay. So let's fast forward ten years, and you've got a wife and a kid. Right. And a mortgage. Okay. And you have to work a job. Yeah. And you got to do because people get it for free. You're gonna have to do it in your spare time. Yeah. Is quality gonna suffer because you don't have as much time to spend on it? Definitely. Yeah. Important. It won't be. Well, like he said about the paintings and stuff. Like, they won't be. I just think they would lose value. Really. I mean, those are like the most valuable paintings and works of art. Right. But anybody can have them. What's the point of having museums? What's the point of having right of anything? I mean, people are gonna lose money. Economy's gonna lose money mm -hmm. because of museums are gonna go out of business because anybody can have a copy of it. I mean, yeah, you can see the first one, but why does it matter? Because it's not there. there it's not theirs anyways. If no one, if there's no copyright or no patents or anything, right? So I don't, I don't know. That's a good point. That's a good point. Any other thoughts on it? I don't know. It just. I mean, it's like with with people having the means nowadays uh, to where I can I can go and I can take my 
$800 camera into the Sistine Chapel and I can take a picture of a high resolution picture and I can put it on Flickr. Mm -hmm. And then because it's such a nice picture that's put out on the internet for free, people are going to keep going to Google and it's going to pop up on the first page of Google's results, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's like instantly, you know, that people can save that onto their computer. And they don't even think like nowadays, like, hey, I should be paying for this. They're like, hey, it's on the internet. You know, yeah. cool, I'm going to save it to my computer. And so, you know, for me, it seems like uh, the game has changed so much to where like, uh, it's, it's almost not, not an option to try to enforce paying for it. I think the option for paying for it should be there. I don't think it should be completely eliminated, but it seems to me like there's another option which is not to pay for it. And a lot of people, unless they have a you know, good reason, they're not going to pay for it. But... I think, I think, I think the economy would crash. Like if, if that. Yeah. Our, our economy is very much established on patents and, and the ability to copyright things. Um, we are not completely a free market. If you guys think back to your high school econ classes, we're not completely a free market, but we're pretty darn close to a free market anymore. Um, which, which really is a good thing. Yeah. Um, it, it's a little bit survival of the fittest, but that's a good thing. If you're not putting out quality, you don't survive. But now it's getting to the point where even if you put out quality, people expect it for free. Yeah, but what the funny. average person doesn't realize is, is that quality will diminish. If I cease to be able to make a living off the music I create, I'm going to cease to make it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't make it for the sake, uh, if I'm just going to make it for the enjoyment of making it, I'll make it and keep it to myself. Yeah. Why am I going to make it and put it out there and make the effort? Mm -hmm. I mean, other than your ego, if it's not about money, then what's it about? I mean, you, you want to make money off of it. That... That's fair. It's no different than the plumber. It'd, it'd be like your toilet going out and you call a plumber, and have him come to your house and be like, hey man, I, I thank you for your work, but man, I wanted that for free, so I'm going to go ahead and not pay you for it. Yeah. Well, that guy got up this morning and put his pants on one leg at a time too, mm -hmm. and he expects to be paid for it. I think as musicians, yeah. we need to have that attitude. Now, that's on the philosophical level. Yeah. So let's get down to the practical, okay? That cat's out of the bag. Like you said, that option's there. So what do we do? One of the biggest questions you're gonna find kind of behind everything I teach in this whole class, this whole semester is, there's gotta be a new way to do business, a new way to monetize it. Because that cat's out of the bag. People yeah. are gonna to continue to download for free. The value of music is gonna to continue to decline. I mean, if you think about it, there are, on iTunes, there are downloads that are $1.29, downloads that are 99 cents, and now they come out with 69 cents, and next year, guess what, they're coming out with 49 cents and it's gonna to continue to decline because people don't value it anymore. Why would I pay for something when I can get it for free? Yeah. So there has to be a new way to monetize it. And one of the things you see is like on YouTube where people place advertisements on their videos. Or, or, or uh, uh, let's see, you get a video for a dollar and 77 cents. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Although ironically, the movie industry is doing better than it's ever done. Which no, is, that's so weird. They're claiming poverty, but like everyone else. But there's more there's more sales of movies than any other time. Part of it's because you need a loan application to go to a movie anymore, but it's like ninety five dollars to go to a movie. Eleven bucks when I went to watch Oz, for, uh, whichever night that was last week. It's like fifteen. Oh, for what? Fifteen. Fifteen. Because like Man. first movie was IMAX. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hollywood's crazy. making the money, but the individual theaters. Uh, I worked in a movie theater back when I was in high school, and uh, it's like, I think for the first few weeks that a movie is out, over half, over three quarters of the proceeds and the profit from the ticket sales go straight to Hollywood. And then yeah, most of the money renting, is made off the concessions. The, the yeah, the concessions are charging nine bucks for a popcorn. Exactly. So, which cost Five them. Five bucks for a drink. I mean, a popcorn's got to cost them 30 cents for that big large man, and a Coke, that's like 5 cents. Yeah, I think it's I like, I used to work at a gas station, it was like 13 cents for every 32-ounce drink, charge a dollar. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge amount that's of profit. That's not too bad, but I mean, five bucks. Well, I'm saying, but I'm, it costs yeah. them the same, same yeah. 13 cents. Yeah, yeah and they're so they're making, bucks. I don't even know how to, I mean, I can do a lot of math in my head, but I can't even calculate what kind of profit that is. <laughs> Right. You think about that's nine, oh well nine is eight in every dollar. So it's eight hundred percent in every dollar. 
That's 400, no wait, 4,000% profit that they're making off that Coke you bought. So I think, I think <laughs> the, the Coke itself was seven cents and you had the cup and straw was 13. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if that's I, I, worked, case, I worked it out one day. I, I, I found the shipping bill, and I was working yeah. out how the cups cost. Cool. That's how bored I was. <laughs> but I mean, think about that: four thousand percent for every Coke. They're doing all right. Yeah, they. They're, they're, you know, and they still have their overhead. They have their employees, but Friday, Saturday night, they're still raking it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what are some other ways? How do you guys see? Because that's one of the things we're 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 trying to get is how do you monetize? Um, one of the things is you're starting to see a lot more artists couple with other brands. Like I saw something on um, the other day where for a, a spray, a carpet cleaner, you can download a free country album hmm. if you buy this carpet cleaner. <laughs> and so now, now on one hand, that enables artists to make money. But perception-wise, what does it do for people? What, how do they start to see music? Oh, They see it as yeah. something that's kind of put on side. Like as like... It's it, close. It it becomes an add-on product. It's like all sweet, mm -hmm. it, like it's a like, tchotchke, like, like a. It's like you know, late at night, you're going. You know, if you order this coat hanger that hangs up nineteen thousand <laughs> coats, we'll throw in this doorknob for free. Yeah. It becomes the throw-in. It becomes more like oh, okay, more free songs. So. Yeah, which devalues it more. Um, something I saw that was really cool. I remember one of the first albums my parents bought me. Uh, Tools 10,000 Days that actually won a Grammy for the visual and the uh, product design. And what they did was they took uh, stereoscopic images, which means you take a camera and you have one angle like this and you shoot it and then you move it at a mathematically calculated other angle like for the distance between your eyes in which they perceive one thing and then you take a picture from there. And then what you do is you take these certain kind of glasses you put them on and it creates a 3D image that uh, whenever you put these glasses on and stuff and then you, know, you look at both the images it becomes one. It's kind of a cool like, like, that's like mind hack or sense hack or whatever you want to call it. But uh, you know, people look at that and they're like, yeah, I got the music, but there's this really badass album that I could buy that has all this cool stuff for me to play with. So it's like... But album art. I mean, does really anyone care about album art anymore? No, not anymore. The albums went like platinum. But was that because of the album art, or was it because of the music? Uh, touche. <laughs> um, I would contend that it used to be album art was very important, yeah. mm -hmm. especially back in the 70s, yeah. mm -hmm. with albums, with truly albums, because mm -hmm. they, they had a much bigger space yeah, I've got with which to, to, dad, so yeah. you know, to, to play with. Like a Yes album, you know, you, you can pull out a poster and there's a big, this big yes poster in, in the sleeve, you know. Get to see Rick Wakeman's 19,000 keyboards surrounding yes. it. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, it's amazing. Love yes. Or I like mean, King Crimson was like I also, you know, the mentality is to buy a single now, where the mm -hmm. music industry is created when it really first emerged it was album based when recorded music started to be the big thing but then in the 50s when rock and roll came in it really went to single based you had the single 45 mm -hmm. so it sort of flipped well in the 70s it flipped again and albums became the basis and really the modern music industry as we know it kind of started in the 70s Frampton comes alive yeah. um, Sorry, record was... labels were no that was way before oh, yeah. Frampton comes alive was the first album that sold enough copies to where corporations started to realize we can make money before record labels were owned by people who loved music. Once Frampton Comes Alive came out and it sold five million copies in a matter of weeks, yeah. a corp corporation started stepping in and go, look, we just want to make money. That's when you started seeing the length of songs shrink. You started seeing a radio format again, which is really a throwback to when music recordings first started, it was called Middle of the Road. But what started happening is um, it started to become a formula and it started to be just about the money. The problem is not only did quality dwindle, but um, the artistic side of it dwindled. Yeah. Didn't, really, it didn't really affect the industry, so to speak, because there was record profits. In fact, the most profitable year of the music industry ever was the year 2000. Huge profits. Um, part of that was because 
a lot of CDs have become really popular, yeah. and a lot of albums that people have bought on tape were being they would go buy them again on CDs, CDs yeah. mm -hmm. and so they were they were buying the same music twice. Um, another thing is that you know the the proliferation yeah, of media had kind of converged and everything. It was sort of a a happy conglomerate of events. Like if you could get a vinyl and a CD, people like to hang on to the vinyl, not even open them, and they'll play the CD. Or they would just they had it in the old record collection. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they had Bob Seger's greatest hits on mm -hmm. album, and they didn't have a record player anymore. They wanted to keep the album. They went out and bought it on CD. Right. Yeah. And part part of the reason I like records so much is. Uh, in Bloomington, there's this really great record store. It's on the north side of Bloomington. It's called One Dollar Books and Records, and they've got like a department sized store of just like records, and records, and records, and books, and books, and books for like a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. But I'm going through the record collection, right? And then I find the Vienna Philharmonic playing Mozart and Haydn for like one dollar, you know? And it's like I got an amazing work of mankind's music for one dollar on a physical copy. I don't got to worry about my computer crashing. I don't gotta worry about you know technology getting in the way. I just gotta worry about my needle not scratching it and like not scratch it with my fingernail or something, you know. And then I got something that will last forever, provided that I take care of it. I mean, that actually feels like the exact opposite attitude towards digital copy. You can keep it in the cloud forever. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but what started to happen is the devaluing of music. The point I'm getting at is that music has continued to be devalued, and so. Monetizing something that the general public doesn't value is becoming a very difficult thing. It can be done. The music industry is going to exist, but no one quite knows how we're going to monetize it in the future. Go ahead, really quick. So then, how do they sell more to make more? Um, you know, more music is consumed now than ever. Consumed, but yeah. less and less is paid for. Right. So there has to be a whole new way to monetize it. Yeah, it's not a matter of selling more. Selling more is not going to happen. Yeah. It has to be right. a whole different, it has to be a paradigm. It's going to be a lot of merging, I'd say, between <coughs> things that you wouldn't even think. I don't know. They're, pro they're, they're, they're products. Well, now, even though they, it, 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 currently live performance is the main mm -hmm. bread and butter, but yeah. with cameras getting so advanced and people taking concert footage yeah. and, like, things like stage it, and, and people have a surround sound, other than the experience, why would you go out and see it? You can see it just as good, and there's not some tall guy standing in your way. Yeah. Yeah. We're so, music it's still, I mean, it's that experience, but why do you want to fight the crowd? Right. That's true. You got those, I mean, you got those um, people. Before we go, I'm going to take attendance real quick. Claudia, I know you're here. I know Aaron's here. Jamie's here. Dylan's here. And what what's your name? Brian. Brian, alright. Alright, so be ready, there'll be two quizzes this week. That is it. I'll let you go three minutes early. Look at me being nice. <laughs> it's three whole